I'm the Borders Beaker and Willow Practice Director for Nordic, um, and I'm here today with Mallory Powers, one of my Beaker Consultants. Let's uh, let's hear a little bit about you. Give us a little intro. My name's Mallory Powers. Um, I'm a Beaker Consultant with Nordic, as Lauren said. I am former Epic. Have been in the Beaker world for about four years now. Took a little diversion into uh, meaningful use for lab for a year and now I'm back working with Epic and loving it. So how many customers have you had some experience with? Kind of break it apart for, because I know that you guys have done a lot of advisory <laughs> stuff with them since it's such a small family, little beaker family. Um, how many customers have you had direct implementation experience with and how many have you been in an advisory capacity with? I've worked start to finish with four customers and then have worked additionally with another customer um, on their install. Okay. So. And I believe that you're one of the few that have done multiple AP installs. Is that true? Yep. Just finished my second AP install, so it was exciting and very exciting to bring up a pathology module in 2014, first hospital to do that. So cool. Um, to kind of delve into some of your epic experience, um, you've mentioned that you just finished a customer that you're you're going to be rolling off of soon. Mm -hmm. So you've seen a number of customers from beginning to end. I'm curious about staffing. Um, I know that this tends to be kind of a hot topic, but what is the most successful staffing strategy that you've seen customers do? And where are some of the pitfalls that customers tend to kind of stumble into when they're picking their staff at the beginning of the project? I think that the most successful strategy is having a combination of clinically knowledgeable staff for laboratory, um, preferably pulled from your lab, but mm -hmm. also making sure that you have those tech savvy quick learners who are going to be able to do your bulk build. Um, I think that one of the pitfalls that a lot of customers fall into is they will pull everyone from their labs. They want to make sure that the laboratory is included for Beaker. Um, but when they do that, they're not necessarily taking into consideration that person needs to be able to work in a computer. Yeah. Um, and so they really do hit that pitfall of, well, they're great on the lab, but they can't really technically hold their own. Um, so they're very slow learners, they're slow to pick things up, and they're slow to make sure that they get their build done. So there's a struggle of finding that balance between making sure you have that knowledge and those, you know, people to go to for workflows and how everything is functional in the lab, but also that you can accomplish getting your build done in a timely fashion and testing it and tweaking it and troubleshooting it for someone who, who works in a computer setting yeah. now. So what are some areas that um, you really need to have people have that tech savviness during a beaker install? I think having someone who's tech savvy allows you to sort of push off more of the bulk build, the things where someone can just power through building out a thousand of something. So what are some of the examples? Um, I think building out the shell of an EAP. Okay. Building out, if they're learning it, order transmittal. Building out sure. some of these pieces that are not necessarily beaker specific, where you don't need to know... Um, you know, how does this affect patient care exactly because of the lab's piece in it? You can pull somebody in where that, you know, they're going to be able to sit there and just plug and chug into a computer and they'll pick up why they're doing it. Um, whereas there are times when you need to know, okay, I'm building out this protocol for this thing and I know why it fits into the system this way because I have that clinical knowledge in the background for it. So. Okay. I think there's a split on that. What are some of the biggest um, tripping points that you've seen customers kind of stumble into during a beaker install? Siloed information. Okay. Um, during a beaker install, there are sort of main groupings of how a lab comes together. There's your general laboratory setting. Um, there's your microbiology area. There's your blood bank, pathology. And then if they have um, specialty testing, like genetic testing or something like that, that also sort of falls into its area. What I've seen people struggle with is if you only have one person who's learned how to build, test, and 
design workflows for that area, gotcha. then you only have one person to go to throughout that whole install. Um, and that happens because one person will be brought on to build out microbiology okay. and then that person is the sole knowledge source. Um, so siloed information is very, very difficult to get out of, but it is a huge stumbling block for customers. It's probably not the best thing during go life either. No. Mm -mm. And once you have that siloed information, when something goes wrong, no one knows how to fix it. So, you know, you can't have someone who's awake 24 seven during your go live because they're the only person who knows the blood bank system sure. or they're the only person who can fix cultures that are you know, causing issues in the system for micro. Um, I think general testing, general uh, chemistry testing tends to be the area that most people can cross over into, but yeah. it's the specialties that when that one person owns the build, people don't know how to help them when it comes time to need to so, assist during go live. So what are some of the strategies that you've seen customers deploy or that maybe you wished that customers would deploy to kind of help break out of these silos? What I wish customers would do more is take, you can have someone do the build. That completely makes sense to me because you might pull someone with the clinical sure. knowledge to do it, but you need to have a backup that cross tests it. Okay. So the person who builds it, I would say should never be the person that tests it. Okay. They should be testing as they go. But I think one of the areas where that gets, you know, sort of mucked up is people will, you know, just test their own stuff and say, well, I've done it. Whereas now your backup hasn't learned anything. They haven't gone through the workflows. They haven't sure. really figured out how to make sure that they're understanding the build in the system. So if you make sure that your backup is doing your testing, um, that they know your workflows, that they're ensuring that everything functions properly, then they'll have a better idea when it comes to go live and it comes to maintenance of, yeah, you know, I may not know every detail, but I know in general how to start a culture, get it through and troubleshoot it on the back end because I did that testing originally for, you know, the analyst who had owned it. So, okay. Um, so you're talking about a lot about uh, keeping out of the silos of the application itself. Mm -hmm. And Beaker isn't a standalone system. No, it is not. So where are some of the sticking points that you've seen customers kind of get caught, if you will, with integrating with some of the other teams? I think the three biggest areas that I've seen are the registration, the front end workflow and how that integrates, the billing workflow and how that integrates, and um, the the op time workflow, I'll call sure. it that because it's not just op time anymore. Um, so as I said before, op time and Beaker have for pathology now integrated so that you have a seamless transition from surgery to uh, anatomic pathology. That functionality has been extended out to Radiant and Stork. Okay. So the op time functionality is an area where you need to make sure that the build that you have in the system supports the workflows that your radiologists are doing and that your surgeons are doing and that your labor and delivery unit has. So it flows into all of those where it's no longer just in op time now. Can you give an example of a workflow that you've seen across all four systems? So I think the hard part is that the build looks similar for it, but because it's new, um, people are just learning how they want to use it in the sure. system. Um, so we have devices that are used at my current customer um, in a radiology setting. Okay. They place the order while they're in doing you know, a CT scan and they'll get a label, they'll run the testing right there. So it was a lot of work to make sure that that workflow functioned for radiology, for placing it while they were there gotcha. in the system where a radiologist works out of a different system right. usually. So there's a, you know, figuring out all those pieces of build and how they're going to integrate, mm -hmm. um, which I think people are just starting to realize now, you know, the breadth of abilities in the new navigators that were built out for them. So, yeah. what, um, 
what is the kind of the biggest argument for AP? I think you've hit on some things that you like about AP. It, it mm -hmm. sounds like you feel like there are, you know, a lot of good features, but if you had to pick, if you were doing sales or, you know, if you're talking to a customer and they're mm -hmm. kind of on the fence about AP, what is the one thing that you would really kind of emphasize? I, it's the integration. Okay. I mean, that is the sticking point for AP. You have, you know, you place the order in the OR, you are not going to lose information from the OR to the pathology department because that information never had to cross anywhere. Sure. It Didn't flows. Have to go through an interface. Exactly. Um, you're labeled in the OR. You get a label that you scan into AP that functions to pull in your testing. You start your case right there. Um, then you go in, you can embed your imaging, you can drop your charges, you can pull all of that, which drops into the patient's chart and is good to go for anyone to look at. So there isn't that piece of, you know, sort of transcribing things over or possibly losing things in the shuffle. Um, now with such a seamless integration, you really get the benefit of having one system with pathology for tissues coming out of the OR. Thank you.